special guest, the first uh, special guest on the Isaiah Thomas show. And uh, Isaiah, I think maybe I, I'm going to let you be broadcaster, man. You, you're going to bring in your, your first guest for us here on the Isaiah oh, Thomas show. Yeah, we got Trey Norwood here, special guest, you know, member of the Pittsburgh, uh, defensive back for the Pittsburgh Steelers now, former OU player, you know, uh, game changer, ball player, man. What's up, Trey? Man, what's up? How y'all doing? Kerry, IT, man, I appreciate y'all having me on here, man. Excited to be the first special guest on the IT show, man. So I'm excited, I'm excited to be on here. Well, let me, uh, Trey, let me ask you. I mean, you know, this is the era of NIL and, you know, Isaiah can get paid to do his own show and stuff like that. What What are your thoughts on, on you know, athletes, you know, college athletes now being able to kind of make money off of their name? Man, I love it, honestly. Um, if, if you ask me, my personal opinion, I, I think it's a rule that should have been or something that should have been implemented. <laughs> Um, you feel me? Uh, at least four years ago, while when we were first coming in school, but um, no, honestly, I think it's a great idea. Um, just you know, what I mean, guys being able to to market themselves off the field and on the field as well, kind of just just showing them, showing showing different sides of themselves, what they love to love to do outside of ball, um, their personalities. Just I think it gives a, a better chance. For uh, fans, you know what I mean, people to to get a better understanding for players, not just know know them as the football players, not just knowing Isaiah Thomas as the football player, being able to to tune into this show, you know what I mean, hear his thoughts on, on different topics and opinions on different topics, and um, like I said, I think it's, I think it's big, I think it's huge, and I think it's only going to grow from here, um, with the deals, you know what I mean, with with, with the money, um, so I'm excited to see where it takes off. Well, and, and Isaiah, you might talk just a little bit about, you know, you really are the only player that, that has his own show um, that, that's doing, like, what's been the reaction of your teammates and things like that, and, and, and how is it received in the locker room? Do you get jokes about, uh, you know, what happens on the show from, pe from other guys that watch it and stuff? No, yeah, I definitely get a lot of jokes and stuff like that. And uh, some comments here and there, especially when I like name drop people like Perion earlier, uh, Nick, you know, other times where I've name dropped teammates. But uh, it's got great reaction. You know, fans love it. Teammates love it. Sometimes they look forward to hearing if they got name dropped or something like that or if I tell a funny story. So, you know, it's always keeps people on their toes. But it's also a great way for me to express myself and talk about my teammates and stuff like that. And Trey, let me ask you this. I mean, I, I, I got to imagine it's been kind of a whirlwind for you uh, in Pittsburgh. Like, I think people think, oh, well, he's got the city, you know, figured out. But it, has it been just kind of nonstop, really, ever since you've been drafted in terms of just being football, football, football? Um, uh, in a sense, but it, it, ha it hasn't been um, – I wouldn't say it's been too hectic. Um, I think that first portion, portion was uh, from the draft – to having two weeks after the draft to, to coming up here for rookie mini camp and then going from straight from rookie mini camp to OTAs. I think that period of time was kind of the, the most hectic. And I wouldn't even say hectic, you know, it's just new. Um, this, this is my first time. Well, that was my first time ever being in Pittsburgh outside of us playing West Virginia and flying into here. This is my first time ever being in the city for real, ever really being up North or East coast uh, at some, you know, I mean, some may consider it, um, but I, it's it's different, but it's a great different. That's what I tell people all the time when they ask me about it. Um, it's a great different um, being in the city. It's a it's a huge, just a huge Steeler city, huge um, <laughs> sports city. Kind of it reminds me of Norman, how 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 the, the diehard OU fans. That's exactly yeah. how it, how it is here yeah. in Pittsburgh. Um, they 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 love they love their Steelers. So um, it's something that I've been embracing. I've been I've been enjoying it. And now that we're in a season that now that I have my routine. It's definitely slowed down now. Um, so, but it's something that I've just been enjoying in the past like I said, five, six months as, as it's still kind of, kind of fresh and kind of new. Like Isaiah, do you, you hit up guys like Trey just to kind of, I mean, you're going to be in the NFL next year. I mean, uh, you know, you've still got a full season to play, but how much interaction do you have with guys like Trey that kind of lets you know what it's going to be like for you at the next level? Well, you know, I know that they're busy, so I don't really like hit Trey up too much. Like the most I'll probably do is like hit him up on Instagram or like comment on his picture and stuff like that. More so to show support and show him that I'm watching, you know, and I want to be in that position one day. But still like guys like Nev or uh, stuff like that or like Kenneth Murray or guys who are uh, or another group of guys who I like, you know, sometimes hit up not too much though because I know their schedules are busy. Because I know if, I, if I'm this busy, I know they're probably even more busy because that's their livelihood, that's their job. But I try not to hit them up too much, but just stay in contact enough to know that I'm supporting. I'm always, you know, looking out and also probably even asking for some advice. 
Trey, I wanted to ask you, you know, kind of, you know, you're in the NFL now, you're, you're living that dream of making football your living, uh, but you're still kind of at that initial stage. What's it kind of like being a, in a locker room full of guys uh, that are multimillionaires uh, and being a guy that, you know, is, is just trying to get his, you know, foot in the door, get established in the, uh, I mean, obviously you're having a really good season. Uh, I, I still love the DK Metcalf hit in the Seattle game. That was, I think I Isaiah and I were both texting each other like, oh my God, did you just see him take out DK Metcalf? Uh, but like, what is that like just, you know, as a kind of young professional football player kind of, you know, seeing the life that could be and in and in, in, in working towards that? Um, I think it's a, it's a big motivating factor. And I, I think it's very unique too, because, um, you know, in college, you, you, you kind of know the age range. You'll have guys you know I mean, from, from 17, the, the young, the young guy, the guys that come in very young, 17 to maybe 23, 24. But, you know, in the NFL, you have guys um, like me that's 22, or you have guys that's even younger than me and the, in the same locker room with guys that are, are late 20s, early 30s, the guys that, that have been playing the league for 10 plus years, the guys that are, that are vets that have, that have seen it all. So for me, I think it's just a big motivating factor and just a big learning experience. For me, I try to soak, soak up as much knowledge and as much game from those older guys, um, especially at, at my position, but even outside my position, just taking nuggets um, from those guys that's been doing it at a high level um, for many plus years. So uh, it's something to me, I, I look at it as motivation. I kind of, as you mentioned, um, you know what I mean? With me being a rookie, just getting started, that's somewhere I, where I want to be, um, to where I've been playing for 10 plus, 10 plus years on my third or fourth contract. So it's something that I, I just look forward to and just uh, use it as motivation. And, and I want maybe both of you guys to address this because I know, you know, with the age of name, image, and likeness, uh, guys are thinking about money at, at an earlier stage than they ever have before. Um, how much of that, I mean, uh, you know, being a rookie and stuff like that for you, Trey, like how much do you start thinking about financial planning? And, you know, you, you, I know you have agents that probably work with you. Is that stuff that you look at as, okay, when, when things get further in my career, I put more into that? Or do you think that that's something that guys now have to think about, you know, even when they're in college? Um, I think it is something that, that guys should, should start thinking about, and especially with NIL, NIL stuff going on with, with guys being able to make money now. It's something that I got started on with during the draft process, actually. Um, I mean, getting a financial, getting a financial advisor and just, um, but like, well, what I will tell guys is um, if you, I mean, when you do get a financial advisor to make sure you're learning from them as well. Cause uh, my biggest thing is, um, you know, they're, they're, they're there to help you, but you want to be able to do it, do it yourself as well. If you ever need to. Um, but I, I, as you mentioned, uh, again, as me being a rookie, being a young guy, it's something that it's something that, that, that is important because um, you want you want to get a jump on I mean, fi financial stability, um, investing in the right things and all that, all that sort. But of course, you know, financial problems and things like that, um, they, they become larger with the more money you have and it becomes more important. So um, as, as many years as I play, um, God willing, in this league, that's something that I'll continue to. Um, to make it some some that's very important to me, but I, like I said, I go back to saying that, especially with the NIL stuff going on, I think guys should start to look into that. Um, then, I mean, once you get into the league, um, that's something that I feel like is very important because you want to make sure, I mean, you're you're taking care of your money, you're not doing anything that uh, unnecessary that you don't need to do. And Isaiah, I mean, like for you, you're you're such a big NBA guy. Uh, I have to think like that you've. You've thought about that. Just you see what Kevin Durant's done. You know, people talk about his portfolio all, all the time. I mean, Michael Jordan, of course. You know, the Godfather mm -hmm. of uh, you know branding and things like that. But what LeBron has done, like you just see NBA players setting them. I mean, setting themselves up to be moguls, basically. And you haven't seen that as much in football. Uh, do you think Isaiah? For you, do you think in those terms, like that's starting to rub off now? Kind of what you grew up with in the NBA that you're you're going to see that moving forward in football. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, uh, how NBA players like Kevin Durant, LeBron and all of them, 
like and even the Shaq, you know, I'm a big uh, Shaq oh, yeah. fan. You know, he he lets his money make money for himself. You know, so he'll just invest in the right things. You know, and uh, put it in places where it can like grow on its own. And that's something you know I'm looking forward to. You know, being able to have my money make its own money, and not too much of me having to do like more things off the field to get more money in my pockets. Because I mean, you can always make money just by sitting on the couch if you're investing in the right things. And like Trey said, you want to get a jump on those things, especially you know next year, God willing. You know, I'm in the position that I want to be in. I can get a jump on those things like that because. I know financial stability is a big thing, you know, that I that I want to have for myself and my family. And uh, just, you know, like those NBA players, you know, like you say, you don't see it too much in the NFL. Like, it's not that guys aren't doing it, you know, just not probably as big or as often. But it's something I'm definitely, you know, focused on. And I definitely notice it just because of how much I watch and keep up with the NBA. Yeah, I think maybe Tom Brady might be a guy that's really set himself up. Yeah. It might be the best example that we've seen so far. Uh, but I mean, with that being said, I mean, how do you guys look at the balance? Because, uh, especially in college, I mean, you know, whether or not some of the negative reaction towards Spencer Rattler was because he was the most famous NIL guy on the team. I think that that might be true with some people, but how difficult is that to say like, okay, I want to make some money here, but I don't want to make it look like football is still not my main focus. Well, yeah, I know, at least from my perspective, uh, being in the locker room with Spencer, I know, like, him not having the success that he wanted was because of the NIL and the off the field, you know, uh, you know, attention that he was getting. Because, I mean, I seen him put the work in every day. You know, we were in the same workout group. We were at practice together. I mean, he was still the same quarterback dicing us up this year as he was last year at camp. And uh, I mean, it's just it's just it's just a part of the game. I mean, you're not going to always have the season or the career that you expect to have. And I mean, I'm not saying this is his story that's going to portray the rest of his career. I mean, it's just a story, not the story. And uh, I, I know for myself, I wasn't, you know, the guy to get my foot in the door early when it came to NIL stuff. I'm more so like like even, you know, this is the only thing I did NIL wise, you know, up until, you know, earlier today. Um, other than that, I just, you know, let my game speak for itself. Then as it started to come in, I probably just took one or two here and there. But other than that, yeah, I just, you know, let the game flow and just focused on football for a little while. But that just, everyone's different. So I can't put too much, you know, credit for myself, but everyone's different. Some would say that Sooner Scoop has really let you down. Like, we still have not got you the Dodge Ram deal. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, after the Tech game, we probably should have had you like a, a nice watch or a truck or something. But I, I failed. So That's I'll take that on me. Trey, uh, let's talk a little bit just kind of about what's going on with you uh, in the Steelers and, and playing. I mean, obviously, we mentioned the, the Seattle Seahawks game where a lot of people took notice of you. And uh, I, I mean, I think all OU fans on draft day when Mike Tomlin came out and, and talked about you kind of being a utility guy and, and how much they loved you. By the way, let me throw this out there. This is kind of like the old, the old uh, um, not wives tale, but uh, people always say like, Oh, if if you go that late in the draft, you don't want to get drafted uh, because then you can pick your team. But I've had like former NFL coaches approach me about that in, in the last year, and they're like, "No, you always want a team to take you because that means they like you and, and that they have a plan for you." Is that is that kind of the way to look at it? In, in you know, when, for guys that are getting drafted in the sixth and the seventh round. Um, that, that's something that I, that that I kind of learned after. You know what I mean, once I got up here, because I, I you know I always heard that too. Once you get past the uh, I say once you get past the the fifth round, I kind of the the, the middle fifth round, uh, later on that you you want to go undrafted, you know what I mean, so you can pick your team. But kind of like you said, um, the, the the pick number doesn't matter if they pick you. That, that means they see something in you. Um, that, that means that, that, that they they have they have something like you said they have something in plan for you to contribute to the organization. It just it just depends on what you come in and do. Um, and for me, um, even going into the to the draft, you know, you always you, you hear about the any projections and all that, but for me, it was it was more of just a um, well, well an opportunity for me. I didn't care what what round, um, what number. I just I just knew. Um, I mean, it was an opportunity for me. So blessed with opportunity, and uh, blessed to be at such a great organization as well. I mean, um, still you know you hear about a still organization going way back. Um, coach Tomlin, such a great coach. So just being here, you know, like I said having the opportunity. So for me, it's just. I wanted to come in and uh, make sure that I took advantage of it and, and try to continue to contribute to the team any way possible. I gotta say, uh, you know, when when the reporters asked Mike Tomlin about the USC rumors, uh, his answer it just blew <laughs> me away. Like I was like, "Damn, he's right!" Like nobody is asking Andy Reid or you know other established coaches if he's up for a college job. Uh, that was like the greatest all time. Just slam the door shut on on any kind of rumor. 
Um, actually, that, that's funny you say, you say that because I didn't. Um, I I ended up seeing a video on, on Twitter or whatnot or some 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 like that on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you could just tell he was kind of furious, you know what I mean? He was <laughs> aggravated. You could tell he he was annoyed with the question. Yeah. Um, and like you said, he, he made a great point though. They they aren't asking Bill Bill Belichick, Andy Reid, guys like that. So um, he, he just he kind of put it out there, made his made his point, made a statement, and uh, left it at that. Is he just kind of like? Does he just have a bigger than life persona when you're around him, or is he is he down to earth? He's such a down to earth guy. He's a a great coach, a great man, and a great leader. I think that's the biggest thing um, that stands out with him. Uh, he's such a great leader. The way he just, I mean, goes about his days, the way he he, he leads us as a team um, from, from from every man on the team. Uh, like I said, he, I, it kind of speaks for itself uh, with me, like I said, from, from top to bottom. Uh, like I said, coach, man, leader, he, he's there for you on the field, there for you off the field. Um, he's a hands-on coach as well. That's what that's what I'll say. Um, he's always, whether it's defense, special teams, offense, he's always around. You know what I mean? Asking questions, picking your brain. You know what I mean? Just just seeing 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 what guys are thinking out there on the field. I mean, making sure guys uh, are learning and progressing each day. So I feel like as a player, you have to love that seeing your head coach being out there hands-on, seeing the type of guy that he is. And I, I, I'll emphasize it again: seeing the type of leader he is. Isaiah, I know you said you don't like bothering guys. Uh, here's your chance: bother Trey. Bother, you know, oh, yeah. ask him some stuff that, that you know you, uh, you, oh, yeah. you really so, want to know uh, about the NFL life. I know you said uh, you know how Mike's a great leader, great coach. You know, and uh, I know you had another great coach here with Coach Riley. How how can you say that they are similar or different in uh, you know different ways? Because I know they're both successful. So, what would you say like about their comparisons and their differences? Um, I would just say from the Kind of with being with Coach Riley as well, he was a great leader. Uh, you know, from the time when, when we came in, you know, we had we were recruited under Coach Stoops, but yeah. um, we came in. You know, we the, the change happened quick, and from day one, you could just kind of. I feel like some guys they just naturally have it in them, and um, I can say that for both of them. With, with Coach Riley, um, all four years that I was there, and just just my 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 beginning of my career here with, with Coach Tomlin, um, they just they kind of they know how to get guys going. They know how they know how to to get everybody on the same page, and um, you know what I mean T to get guys to go out there and uh, you know what I mean P perform their best and uh, give it their all. I mean, I think that's the the biggest thing. Um, just the the whole camaraderie of the team aspect. You know, yeah. at OU, a yeah. lot of a lot of things we did. You know, the standard standard is a standard. We had that at OU. Right. That's, that's the same right. way. That's the same way here. The standard is a standard. You know, it's a whole team thing. It's a collective. It's a collective uh, group, you know. Sometimes, um, you know, what I mean, other teams, you, you know how it is. You might you might have individualized, you know, what I mean, efforts or whatnot. But I feel like the biggest thing, um, another thing that from OU to here is just everything's team oriented. And all guys are bought in. Um, all, all you know I mean, guys are not trying to be individuals. Everybody's trying to do what's best. You know I mean, for the team and chip in any way possible. So I feel like they 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 they're very similar to each other. Yeah. Um, they both great coaches, and I mean, in, in their respective aspects. So, um, blessed to be able to play on a coach Riley, and blessed to be able to play on a coach Tomlin right now. And I kind of wanted to shift the conversation because we played Baylor this week, and I know last year against Baylor, you had that interception, and really probably one of the better back halves of the season as a DB last year in the whole nation. Like I would say, you know, top two, if not number one, uh, in your performance in that back half of the season. And uh, you know, I've known you since high school, basically. You know, that Sooner Squad seventeen group, and uh. And I seen you start early as a freshman and, you know, not have the success that you wanted with the injury that you had. What sparked that success that you had at the back half of your last year? Because, I mean, it was just literally zero to 100. And it was, I mean, honestly, the more impressive seasons I've seen out of a DB that we've had in a while. Um, For, for me, it was just um, staying grounded, staying humble. You know what I mean? And um, just 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 trusting, trusting, trusting in the Lord's plan. That was my biggest thing. Um, you know what I mean? Had the injury in 2019, and uh, for me that was a, that was a shocker. I had never had a major injury, um, had never really had never even missed a game, honestly. So missing a whole entire season, um, I tell people all the time. People ask me, you know, ask me about the injury or any, anything of that aspect. I tell people, um, if I was to go back, I wouldn't change it. I feel like it um, it bettered me in a lot of ways. Um, it made me reappreciate the game. It kind of humbled me, and um, 
just kind of kind of grew me as a as a person you know what I mean um a, a, as a player and so for me then you know coming into this past season with the the whole COVID deal not starting off the, the season how I wanted to um I'm, my biggest thing was just like I said, staying grounded, staying humble, making sure I was preparing myself each and every day at practice, um, outside of practice with the film study, making sure that I was pre pre <clears throat> preparing myself like I was about to go out there and play every snap, you know what I mean? And uh, then when my time came, I feel like that that's, that's what it clicked, um, when it clicked for me, just being ready. You know, they say, they say preparation, opportunity, you know what I mean? When, when those two meet, that's when, that's when great things happen. So, um, for me, I would just continue to say just being grounded and being humble. You know, it, it's tough. Um, so playing early, playing as a true freshman, yeah. and then starting every game my sophomore, it's my sophomore year, and then having an injury, and then feeling like I was working my way back. You know, what I mean, from the injury. But like I said, it's something that I, I would never change, and I, it's, it's a part of my story and the reason as to why I'm here, uh, where I'm at right now. Yeah. What was the uh, – let me ask you kind of the reverse there. What's it been like watching a guy like Isaiah and even a guy like Nick Benito kind of become uh, the centerpieces of this defensive line from, you know, guys that were young and raw? And, and, I mean, Nick didn't even dress up for games when he was a freshman going kind of through that, you know, that, that uh, strength and conditioning program. But, um, I mean, I know the year you were out, he kind of – that Baylor game was where he had the interception at the end of the game. Uh, but just to see these two guys that that you you know came in with you to see them having the success, what's that what's that mean to you right now? That means a lot, especially with it. Um, kind of how you mentioned the Sooner Squad seventeen, we all came in together. Um, so you know we we've been close um, since day one uh, when we came in together. So just especially for him, and then Nick was that class up under us. Um, coming coming in right behind us um, and just uh, just just seeing the, seeing the work pay off um, two guys that that work hard day in and day out um, just just trusting the process you know what I mean um, and then when the time came they, they it went like that um, so just seeing those guys seeing those guys ball and uh, doing it at the high doing it at the highest level um, and now being a wrecking force you know what I mean uh, all through the Big 12 and college football you know we we they're easily arguably the, um, part of that top uh, top defensive line. I mean, in college football, so just seeing that and seeing those other guys on the defensive line. I mean, seeing them come together and ball. And uh, you know, what I mean, last year that, that helped me out. You know, what I mean, them that, that <laughs> is why I got some of the picks that I got. You know, what I mean, so DBs and and D linemen. Well, most people don't know DBs and D linemen. We we, we work together. I mean, rush rush and coverage work together. So. Um, just seeing those guys do that, knowing that they're going to finish out the season you know, strong, and then, you know, what I mean, they'll, they'll be they'll be here next year. You know, what I mean, hopefully we can get them here uh, to Pittsburgh. You know, what I mean, so <laughs> you see the you see the D line guys can learn behind those guys. You know, yeah. Cam, hey, I, I, we got the best D line in, in the NFL, so um, we'll, we'll love them. To, you know, what I mean, but wherever they go, I'm gonna be rooting for them. Uh, you know, I'm happy for them and proud of them. Uh. By the way, I told uh, I told Isaiah that I get to be his watch Sherpa for his draft. So uh, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if you've gotten into the watch game or not. If you got any suggestions, feel free to throw them out. But say I, I have not. Um, I haven't gotten any jewelry yet. Um, that's something that's going to come later on. Um, you're not. You're not Hollywood or CD yet. No, 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 no. That's that's different money too. That's first round money. Man. That's first round money. So. Um, but no, I, I have I have not gotten to the watch. Yet, so. Y'all got to put me on game. Uh, you know, I know about the basics, you know, the rollies, but I don't know about the different rollies and all that type stuff. You know, I know the APs and all that, but yeah, yeah. Not too much. It's actually kind of funny, Kerry. You mentioned uh, Hollywood and City because uh, that 2017 class that came in together, that's a pretty iconic class if you ask me. I mean, we got some – we. Yeah, we got some dogs in that class, man. We got some a, a lot of players. I mean, guys that's in the NFL, going to be in the NFL. And, I mean, guys who prevailed through a lot, so – it is funny. I mean, like because you know, Trey. I was I was talking to Isaiah when we f first started this way back. That was like, you know, that recruiting class. That was like before they gave players their own individual logos and stuff. And it's like you guys are like ancient, but like you put. I mean, you you could put your class up against anything that's come out of here in recent years. Our class was hot, and and a lot of guys. I think a lot of guys kind of forget because a lot of guys came out their junior year. Yeah, I think like C. Yeah. Um, Jet was a part of our class too, um, but you know he came from JUCO, so he came out the year before. 
but you got Jet CD K9. Um, you can go on for, for days. So our, our class, our class is going strong. I mean, our class 2017 is going strong for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah, anything, any, any, any last uh, questions that you want to get out there to Trey? No, nah, I ain't got uh, too many more questions. I mean, I'd just probably say my favorite memory with Trey is that uh, his pick six against Florida and running in there with him, man, that was probably my favorite memory with him. <laughs> with him. Yeah, that was, that was last game, too. That was my last one. That was my last yeah. one. I was, I was the first yeah. player defense, actually. <sighs> crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I guess, I guess they forgot to care about like that. I, I, I guess, guess they, they forgot, forgot to care about, about this season, season too, too, just, just like, like the bowl game. game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put I, that clip. Uh, one of my, actually, one of my dogs. That's funny. I'll say that one of my dogs here. Um, he's a he's a safety as well. He's here, and we trained together during the draft process wow. in uh, in Tampa. He was wow. number thirteen for uh, for Florida, the safety. And um, I, I mess with him here, but we we be talking about it all the time. You know, like I said, I keep up, still keep up with y'all. Tap in every Saturday. So we always talk about, you know, what y'all are doing, what Florida's doing. So that's funny you say that, though. By the way, uh, how much have you seen of Caleb Williams, and what have you thought about what you have seen? So let's hear it. He, a young guy does not play like a young guy. Look like he's been in there for <laughs> four or five years, man. Um, you know, because I, I – I, let me think. You know, I had heard about him being there, but I had never – I don't think I ever met him or seen him or anything. Like I might have seen him around, but – um, you know, he got there in the spring. I was that's when I was training and everything. So I never really got to see him in action, see him at practice. But I, I was hearing even from from the guys um talking to him here and there during that whole process. It was like, yeah, he's gonna be nice or whatnot. And then just just seeing what seeing what he did, um that Texas game, you know what I mean? As a young quarterback, 17, 18 year old, um, in your school's biggest rivalry game, you know what I mean, one of the the probably one of the top known rivalries in college football at that. Um, just seeing him doing that and then being consistent with it. Um, he's been doing it, you know what I mean, the past few games. So it's something that that, that the that the team has it should be excited about. That I mean, the, the fans. Uh, it's something that, that I enjoy watching. Like I said every Saturday. So like I said, he's a young guy that's not playing young, and you love to see that. Do you get do you get kind of some shades of Baker and Kyler in, in seeing some of the stuff he's doing out there? Dude, I, especially with the running, you know that, that's that's K one. Um, you, you can definitely see that. Um, so you, you can get a mixture of both with um, with Bake and K one, but it's just it, it's 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 something that you know what I mean. Watching it, it's playing, you know, playing. But watching it, uh, you know how it is watching it on the TV right. and watching it from outside, it's yeah. different. You know what I mean? Um, so it, it's something that, that, that I enjoy watching, like I said, every Saturday. Because uh, I'm always tuned in, you know what I mean? Um, so if guys is 9 and 0, so hopefully IT and boys pull it out. I mean, I'm telling, I tell, I told a fan last night um, after the game, they were. Um, I was getting ready to leave, and they were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, we're we're from Oklahoma, yeah, yeah." They choose Sooner fans. They're like, "What I think the Sooners going to do?" I'm like, "Mark my words, the boys going to win a national championship this year." So, yeah, I'm mark my words. <laughs> hey, November 9th, y'all remember I said that the boys going all the way this year. They're going to win it all. What? Uh, one last thing before we let you go. What is your favorite moment from championship mo November over the years? Oof. I mean, there's, I mean, there's been, been some great, great bedlam, bedlam games. I would say, I think it's a lot. Um, yeah, I can go like the freshman year. Bedlam, my freshman year was um, was my first game like playing a lot. That was my, that was kind of like my introduction. Um, I can say that game. Sophomore year, um, the West Virginia game. Up here, it was up here in Morgantown. Um, that, was that was the, the snow, snow fight, fight right? right? Was that, was that the, the, the fight? That was, the year, the that was the year before. That was that was before we got there. That was oh, the okay. Um, it went down to a nail biter. Um, mm -hmm. so that's when CK mm -hmm. had the fumble recovery and all of that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That game, um, the Baylor game, the year I was hurt. How 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 that crazy comeback? Um, yeah. yeah. So I think last year. Um, the Bedlam, you can say the Bedlam game again. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's been some crazy moments. It's been some crazy moments. Um, you know, championship November, that's when, I mean, that's a huge emphasis. So I'm excited to see them boys go out there. I mean, do their thing these next 
four or five weeks. Um, like I said, I'm tuned in every Saturday. Trey, uh, I know Sooner fans everywhere are just so proud to see the start that you've had in, in the NFL with the Pittsburgh uh, Steelers, and uh, we want to wish you the best of luck and uh, appreciate you being guest number one on the Isaiah Thomas Show, man. Big moment. Said thank you all again for having me. Appreciate you, man. IT, appreciate you, man, for, for getting me on here. Like I said, man, good luck to y'all, to you and the team the rest of the season. You know, I'm tapped in. Um, you know, always hit me if you ever need anything. Kerry, thank you for having me on here as well. Um, Any anytime, man. Appreciate y'all, man. All right, that's Trey Norwood, uh, Pittsburgh Steeler, uh, former Sooner, uh, always a Sooner, though. And uh, thank to him for joining us. Uh, we'll be back to wrap it up with on the uh, Isaiah Thomas show. All right, uh, we are back. Uh, gonna wrap things up. And man, that was awesome, dude. I, I really appreciate you getting Trey on the show and get to talk to him. And uh, just I like I, I wasn't lying. Like you and I were texting each other when he when he rocked DK Metcalf. Yeah. Uh, earlier this season like it was amazing uh and you know to see kind of the impact that he's had already you're not surprised because i mean he was one of your best players uh for years in the secondary um but uh i don't know you, just your thoughts on uh, first off let me ask you just I, I assume first guess you guys were always pretty close pretty tight oh yeah yeah so i know uh yeah like you said me and trey have been pretty cool pretty tight known him since high school and i know my first day meeting him was at headington hall um and we were walking in going in the elevator and i was like man this guy's small then you know that first time during fall <laughs> camp man he's making plays and stuff and they got him in a rotation ends up starting in the rose ball all that so man we man, we're close still man still hit him up tweet about him sometime and stuff like that so man it's, it's glad to see where he's at now well, it's officially here, championship November, uh, off week. Uh, was it good for everybody? Uh, what's, you know, two practices in this week. Uh, is it a different vibe knowing that it's Baylor, it's championship November, it's on the road? Well, yeah, initially with the bye week, it was great because, I mean, we're really close to being 100%. Like Coach said, we got a lot of our injured guys back and stuff. So, and going into championship November, you know, it's time, you know, not that we're going to do anything differently, but probably just enhance what we have been doing because, you know, this – this uh, championship November run is either going to make or break your season. And with the history that we've had, you know, we wanted to make our season. Uh, just in terms of, uh, you know, this game over the years, I mean, I know Baylor had a down year last year, but uh, they are a, a much, it appears, a much better team this year. Well, oh, I mean, yeah, what's, yeah, definitely... what's really kind of stood out to you uh, just watching them? Is it, is it a difficult offense just because, uh, you know, Bohannon kind of makes you – uh, look for a lot of different things every play? Oh, yeah, I would say that. I mean, initially they're better because I think of their coaching. You know, I think they're better coached for sure this year. And uh, guys sound like – I mean, guys seem to be more cohesive and more, you know, that camaraderie that's uh, instilled in them this year than it was – it wasn't there last year. And they just seem like they're having more fun. You know, you got to be aware. You got to be on your toes. I wouldn't say it's a uh, offense we haven't seen before. I mean, I say that every week. So, I mean, it's nothing we can't handle, of course. But, I mean, yeah, they're a better team, obviously, on tape. But, you know, if we just do our job, you know, handle our P's and Q's, I think we'll be fine. I know you're you're impressed with some of their defensive players, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think definitely. we've talked you about know. that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They stand out on tape, you know, and uh, I think it's to the point where, you know, that they give such a good effort and stuff like that, that if you're not, it stands out on tape. So I definitely give them credit where credit's due. All right, Isaiah, uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you, appreciate the show this week. Uh, a little bit different, but I think that's good. Change it up once in a while, and heck, who doesn't want to hear from Trey Norwood uh, exactly. in the year that he's having so far? So uh, thanks to you uh, it, for being the star that you are uh, of the <laughs> Isaiah Thomas show uh, and giving appreciate us a name you. for the show. Uh, so best of luck uh, this week uh, at Baylor, and um, I'm, I, I, I can't officially say I'm rooting for you, but... I think everybody and their dog knows that if you guys don't win this game, I'll be as bad as anybody because <laughs> I want everybody to tune in, as many people as possible, to tune into the Isaiah Thomas show each Man. and every week. Um, just like you want to win a national championship more than I want that. So uh, <laughs> Boy. that's what's always funny is like people just think, oh, they don't want that. No, they want to win. Like if, if oh, yeah. anybody ever loses a game, they're more mad than you'll ever be. So ever. Um, anyway, so. Uh, so anyway, thanks to Isaiah. Just wrap up the show, Kerry. Wrap it up. Just get out of here. Thanks. And uh, you guys, uh, go check him out on uh, Instagram and Twitter. I'll put the links up here at the end for you. Uh, subscribe on YouTube uh, because uh, we love to have all the subscribers. Thanks for everybody and all the comments. Uh, and maybe we'll get some, uh, leave some 
some uh, questions in the comments this week, and maybe we'll try and get to that some next week as well. Uh, we could answer your questions. Uh, and guess what? Only the people that, li- that watch the entire show are going to know that they get to ask questions. So it'll be yeah. the diehard. So there you go. Isaiah, I'm getting out of here. Isaiah, thank you. Good luck this weekend. We'll see you next week right back here on the Isaiah Thomas Show uh, from Sooner Scoop and YouTube.